welcome to the International Desk. I'm Linda Kincaid. We begin with the latest measure on the global fight against modern-day slavery. The U.S. has just unveiled its annual human trafficking report. It says Cuba, Kenya and Saudi Arabia are among those doing better, but Egypt, Ghana and Bulgaria are among those doing much worse. The Trafficking in Persons report is the U.S. government's principal diplomatic tool to engage foreign governments on human trafficking. The report compiled by the U.S. State Department aims to measure a country's effects, efforts in fighting modern-day slavery. The U.S. government uses the report to combat trafficking and advance anti-trafficking reforms. Aisha Sisei is following all the details for us in Washington. Aisha, good to see you. Hi there, Linda. Yes, as you just mentioned, the Trafficking in Persons report was released a short time ago by the United States. And, you know, this really is a big moment for all those fighting the issue of uh, human trafficking and modern day slavery. A moment where this report really does bring the problem center stage and really does make clear the scope and the reach of the problem. As you made clear, 188 countries ranked according to their perceived efforts to fight this issue, to acknowledge the problem uh, to prevent it uh, to eliminate it this is how the countries are assessed and then ranked uh, Secretary of State Kerry was here at the State Department where we are and made some remarks a short time ago you know I think it's interesting to note that many people see this report as very much a naming and shaming tool one to really put pressure on governments around the world but Secretary Kerry made the point that this is about a lot more than just that take a listen And this report is important because it really is one of the best means that we have as individuals to speak up for adults and children who lack any effective platform whatsoever through which they are able to speak for themselves. Because of its credibility, this report is also a source of validation and inspiration to activists on every single continent who are striving to end this scourge of modern slavery. A source of validation and inspiration you heard there from Secretary Kerry. Uh, very interesting to note that there was a, a lot of movement in the report this year. 18 countries were upgraded, 18 countries were downgraded. I'm joined by our own Elise Labert, our World Affairs correspondent here at the State Department. Elise, a lot of movement in the report. Talk to me about what stood out for you. I think what stood out for me is the whole situation about Thailand and Malaysia, okay? Both countries moved from the what we call the Tier 2 watch list. They've been on this watch list for several years as serious offenders were given a chance to improve their record and then last year were moved to Tier 3, which is really the worst offenders. This year, Malaysia was moved up back to the watch mm -hmm. list. Thailand was not. And uh, there's been a lot of talk about whether this is tied to the president's Trans-Asian Trade Initiative. And at least before you go further, explain to our viewers what the watch list is. Help them understand the context. Well, watch list is basically a, a kind of uh, probationary period. Mm -hmm. and, you're and on notice. So you're to speak. on notice, and if you're on this watch list, and for a few consecutive years, if you don't improve your record, you get moved down to the tier three. So there's tier one, two, and three. There's this kind of middle category where you know you're really three strikes and you're out. Um, and, and Malaysia and Thailand really were seen as some of the worst offenders. We've seen so many horrible situations in both of those countries. Mm -hmm. um, Thailand was kept on the list um, and, and Malaysia was moved up. And we've been talking about whether this was tied to uh, the president's trade policy. Obviously, if Malaysia was on the tier three list, mm -hmm. it wouldn't have been able um, to go ahead with that. So Malaysia was moved up and interestingly we've seen this horrible situation at the border um, with this trafficking route with Thailand, Malaysia, Myanmar, these horrible mass graves. Ironically that was happened after the reporting period. That ended March 31st. Okay. So Malaysia had this happened before I'm not sure Malaysia would have been able to been moved up. Now Thailand on the other instance the benefit of time really hurt Thailand mm -hmm. because Thailand has taken a lot of uh, efforts in the last year. There have been a lot of crackdown. Uh, uh, this report talks about Thailand. Some of the worst offenders are, are officials that are complicit in trafficking of human persons. Yeah. And so 
Thailand made some arrests, including 15 officials, kept on the but list outside, this year. outside the reporting of the period. reporting so period. The timing is very important, but That's the key right. thing here is Thailand Malaysia downgraded last year to tier three, the lowest level. Malaysia upgraded to the tier two watch list. At least we appreciate the perspective. Thank you so much. Uh, alongside the release of the trafficking in persons report, the State Department also honors the efforts of individuals who have played an outstanding role in fighting the issue of uh, human trafficking. This year, eight individuals were recognized, including our own network, CNN. Uh, CNN recognized for CNN's Freedom Project, um, our long-running initiative shining a light on the issue of human trafficking, modern-day slavery. It is now in its fifth year and has told countless stories of victims and survivors. Uh, today here at the ceremony at, at the State Department was our own Tony Maddox, my boss, uh, who was here um, accepting the award for his outstanding effort in leading this initiative. I spoke to Tony just a short time ago. Take a listen. And closer to home from the United States, Mr. Tony Maddox. Mr. Maddox, we congratulate you for your sustained campaign to raise public awareness and understanding of human trafficking on a global scale, your advocacy on behalf of victims, and your dedication to ensuring that survivors and their stories are heard. Congratulations to you and well done. Thank you. Well, that was the moment, the moment, I should say, that Tony received the award from Secretary of State John Kerry. I spoke to Tony after that, and he told me that this was a tremendous moment of pride, not just for him personally, but for also the network that remains committed to telling these stories, even though, of course, here in the news business, there are competing priorities. But the issue of human trafficking remains a constant for this network, and we will continue to tell these incredibly vital stories. We will actually bring you some of my interview with Tony a little later on. Uh, stay tuned for that on my show, New Center, at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time. We'll bring you that conversation then. Back to you, Linda. It's great to see that uh, CNN received some recognition for all the coverage on human trafficking, and I know it's a cause very close to your heart as well. Aisha Sasei in Washington, thank you very much.